Would you date a non-Christian? Can you kiss before you get married? Can you have certainty about your faith? This is part two of Do All Christians Think the Same? Hey, what's up guys? My name is Isaac and this is The Daily Disciple where I help you follow Jesus daily. This is part two of all, do all Christians think the same? I'm excited to get into this video again. It provided some good content in the first video and this next uh, part of the video here, the second half, did not fail in terms of the juicy, interesting questions that it got into. The conversation is quite interesting. So let's get into it now. Sure, I'll go on this one now. <laughs> I am married. I've been married for almost 10 years to a Christian man. For me, what I feel in the Bible that God describes as a Christian family is two people, husband and wife, who are devoted to serving the Lord together. And we need somebody to come alongside us who is helping us to pursue our purpose and our calling in Christ. It's totally possible and often happens that people of different religions or someone who's a Christian and that doesn't have a religion at all are able to still work together and are able to still help people grow in their faith. I totally agree that I could learn from non-Christians, even benefit from relationships with Muslims, Buddhists, or other non-Christians, but the Bible is specific about not being yoked in marriage to unbelievers. Whether you're a Muslim, Christian, or a Buddhist, and you find someone who doesn't share that, I think you're missing something core in that relationship, which won't work for any marriage. But the thing is, uh, when you break down so many of the major religions, a lot of the tenets are the same, and we kind of believe the same thing inherently. Okay, now you see I wasn't joking when it talked about touching on a lot of interesting things. Okay, should Christians date somebody or get married to somebody uh, that is uh, a, not a Christian? Should they do that? Okay, I'll answer with my perspective. But first, I want to touch on the fact that he said, one of these guys was saying that, look, oh, you know, it doesn't really matter because all religions are kind of the same. Anyway, the main tenets are the same. This really scares me, honestly, when I hear this from Christians. Christians because it, to me it, it sets off warning bells in my head like they don't have an understanding a true understanding of what Christianity the message of Christianity actually is and that's not me saying oh my goodness I'm so much smarter than you but ultimately somebody miscommunicated what Christianity was about to him or the research that he did it wasn't sufficient because ultimately when we look at both like religions okay I'm just gonna break it down really simply so I can understand because I'm not that smart but ultimately when we look at other religions if you study different religions they're all attempts to get to God all attempts you know maybe there's some other religions where it's like you got to achieve peace or oneness but ultimately they're trying to find peace uh, oneness where their soul can rest or they can go to heaven or they can appease and they can appease God in some way it's all this kind of works we have to do stuff in order to get to where we want to get to Christianity is very different actually the uh, Christianity says in the Bible no one has done good no not one no one seeks for, for God no one does what is right for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God we're all dead in our trespasses and sins those are all uh, quotes from verses paraphrases from verses in the Bible it's saying hey look people on our own we're not just great people and we can't get to heaven we can't appease God just by our works but that's why we need Jesus Jesus came fully God and fully man to die on the cross rose again on the third day defeating death and the the devil and making a path so we can have reconciliation with God right so it wasn't out of our works that we were you know reconciled to God no it's actually faith in God's grace right it's by God's grace that we can have faith in him and trust him it's not our works but it is grace and so that is very different from other religions so ultimately when you get to the question of okay would you date or marry a non-christian it gets to the heart of okay what are we trying to do here on this earth are we like what what is marriage about number one and also what do we what's our purpose here on earth as christians and as people in general ultimately we're here to image god we're here to show creation hey, this is what god looks like his loving kindness his goodness his holiness obviously we cannot 
do that perfectly. That's why we need God's grace. And he, 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 and now we do this out of love for him. We image him out of love for him and serve other people out of love for him. But when it comes to marriage, um, you're, you're t saying about being in a very tight, right? Uh, a covenant relationship with somebody. Uh, and you, you, you contemplate maybe that person doesn't even believe in God or doesn't believe in that message that should uh, overwhelm your life, impact every aspect of your life. Um, it just doesn't seem compatible. Not only does the Bible say we shouldn't be, you know, unequally yoked, you know, in, in the Bible times or even just, you know, at times where they used oxen, uh, they had these things called uh, yokes. So there'd be like a yoke on top of like, a, you know, whatever kind of animal, animal or whatever. And that would just to be keep them, keep them together, keep them kind of even. But if you had one that was quite a bit bigger than the other, the yokes would be, you know, they wouldn't be even and that would just cause a lot of problems in terms of whatever that those animals were trying to pull all that to say is that we ought not be unequally yoked that's where it comes from um with somebody that's not a christian i think too often Christians can feel like, okay, hey, look, I can date a non-Christian because it's not that big a deal. You know, I can have my Christianity here. And when I talk with them, you know, it's not really that, that, that big, you know, it's just kind of, you know, all the tenants kind of the same thing, just love other people, that kind of thing. To me, that's, that's a clear sign, right? That your Christianity has not made its way past like the start line, right? Like Christianity and Jesus and this, this whole life, lifestyle, right? The, the fact that we have been saved by by God, by his grace, the implications of that ought to be life consuming. Every aspect of your life has been touched or should be touched by God, right? So what we watch, who, how we interact with people, how we, you know, what choices we make, how we spend our money, all these aspects are so connected to our foundation, which is in Christ. So for Christian, I really encourage you, if this is something that you're kind of wrestling with, if you see, hey, you know, maybe I can make this work, I'd really evaluate, hey, am I letting the, the gospel impact every aspect of my life? Or am I trying to keep my Christianity in a box so that I can have these other boxes like box of like a you know relationship with a non-christian boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever or or box with you know stuff on tv that is inappropriate or you know nudity or all that or pornography or whatever that is maybe we're keeping different boxes and we're not letting the gospel impact every aspect of our lives to me, it's like, this is a non-negotiable. There's lots of practical reasons too. That's the argument in, you know, in principle and according to what the Bible says and, and just kind of working through these issues, but practically being, having, you know, a, a faith that should impact so much of your life, there can be a lot of conflict that will arise if you, the person that you're with does not believe the same things that you do on such a foundational level. I wish I could be over there, but I can't. Um, unfortunately, I made some bad decisions when I was younger. The people that I've been with prior, there's always a piece of me with them, you know what I mean? Like it's something I can never get back. It kind of bums me out a lot because <laughs> it's like I wish I could have saved myself all the way until marriage um, in all aspects of physical relations. As far as sex goes, I mean, that ship already sailed, but I do think that as a Christian, I should be dating to find someone to be with long-term or finding someone to marry. And so part of that does involve sometimes waiting a little bit longer, waiting longer to like have sex and to like really be intimate. Okay, so this is a big question. Um, sometimes we can, as Christians, we can jump into this, this, you know, this issue and, and unnecessarily hurt some people that have been kind of gone through this, maybe made those bad decisions that this guy in the hat said, he, oh, he made these bad decisions. And he says, yeah, a, a piece of me has kind of been lost. Um, but sometimes that actually goes overboard in, in a lot of what, you know, we say in maybe in the purity movement, particularly. 
you know, this idea that, oh man, once you've kind of done this, you've given away yourself, you can never get that back, man. You'll just be incomplete. And um, in some ways you're less than the people that have now, you know, saved this. And, and so now, you know, you've made this terrible decision and all this kind of thing. And I think that that can be really hurtful sometimes. Ultimately, we don't want to neglect the truth of this and what it says in the Bible, right? If we're just looking for straight up, hey, is this, is do Christians do this? Yes or no. And some things are, you know, we need to use our discernment. Some things we got to wrestle with and, and they're a little bit more gray. This is actually not one of those issues. This is not one of those ones where we're like, well, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. We can read in the Bible, look, fornication is wrong. Okay. So where do we move from there? Well, this other fellow, he says, Hey, look, you know, sometimes I wait a little bit longer, depending all this kind of thing. My question is, is where is he getting his morality from, right? He claims to be a Christian and yet there seems to be a lack of understanding or or, or even like a dependence on what the Bible says, as opposed to, you know, just general, hey, he's like, hey, you know, sometimes I, I try to wait a little bit longer, but that's kind of up to me. Hey, and look, I, no hate towards this guy. I love this guy, but at the same time, I just want to ask him, and, and if you're watching, I just want to ask you, hey, uh, where are you getting your morality from? Because if, we, if we're looking in the scriptures, if we're, we're seeking to live our lives according to what the Bible says out of love for God, um, then we, we ought to try to listen to it, right? I just want to say this. If you've had sex before you are married and, and now you're kind of in this state where you're, you're reading the Bible, you're, you're learning, okay, God's your plan and purpose for your life and yet you feel, oh man, you know, why did I do this? Uh, this is, this sucks. Um, and, and maybe you're hearing voices that say, Hey, look, you know, you'll, you'll never be the same. You can never get that back. And, and you're kind of less than in a sense, um, ultimately, you know, in Christ, in Christ, we have redemption and we have restoration. And so you are not less than because you've done this because of the mistakes you've made in your past. Jesus covers those, right? You're not a, a worse Christian because you've made those mistakes in your past. No, Jesus grace, Jesus, the grace that God has for me is the same God, grace that God has for you. And all those things I've done in my past, Jesus has covered them. All the things that you've done in your past, Jesus has covered them. And now we can actually stand blameless before God. And it's not about, oh man, I got to do all these things in order to make God love me. No, it's God accepts me by his grace and I want to act and worship him through my life and through what I'm doing. And that's why I want to read the Bible. That's why I want to see what God has to say about this issue. This is why I want to, I don't want to just make up my own morality, but I want to follow what God has for me. Because what ultimately what God has for me is best. So I personally am actually not even kissing until I get engaged, which a lot of people don't believe me about, but I had a two year relationship and I promise it happened and it was hard. Strong, girl. I didn't particularly like it, but I just find so much strength and closeness to God in reserving my physical expression of love for people. Even though it's very, very far from easy, it's something I'm so excited for. To be able to tell that person, I saved this the most intimate part of myself for you because God was the only one who had a key to my heart before this. Okay, we're getting into it now. I don't know how it happens, but I keep touching on this. Okay, uh, <laughs> I have to be, <laughs> this, this channel is a lot about authenticity, right? I wanna be real with you guys. I don't wanna just come across as some know-it-all guy that just thinks he knows everything about the Bible or Christianity or, or whatever, because that's not true, right? <laughs> Uh, I'm a single guy. I've never been in, in a relationship. So this, this, you know, we're talking about, you know, relationships. Uh, this girl's talking about, oh, well, I've never kissed or not kissing until engaged. A lot of people have different standards for that, right? And you're going to encounter if you, you're a Christian or if you begin to dwell, you know, being Christian circles, you're going to find out, hey, look, a lot of Christians have different standards on this. And remember for the last question that I talked about, hey, this isn't a gray issue. This isn't a discernment issue. It's clear in the Bible, what the Bible says about fornication. This is clear, right? Okay, this is kind of one of those more gray issues, one of those discernment issues. And this is actually an exciting thing because people will ask, you know, Christians, oh, should I do this? Should I do this? Should I do this? Ultimately, you know, my kind of response to that and, you know, hey, what do I know on this topic? But 
but ultimately, you know, what I try to do, just taking it from my own personal experience um, on these kind of gray issues is, is seek wisdom from God. God says, hey, ask, ask for wisdom from me. Wisdom comes from God. The fear of God is beginning of wisdom. So fear God, ask God, hey, give me that wisdom i need wisdom that comes from god and uh, consult and <laughs> consult it sounds like you're for like a consulting firm but no like ask people in your life that are wise that are that have been through um this stuff that maybe you have an experience so ask them hey you know how how far should you go in the, in this case and and you know is kissing okay like what do you think is wise here and yeah you're going to get different perspectives but that's going to help you as you walk on your own journey in your relationship um I, I always say this, but if I ever start writing a rela relationship book, somebody please stop me because, you know, there are certain issues that are black and white, right? And then there are a lot of gray issues and I get nervous when Christians start putting um, gray issues in the black and white territory saying, hey, you know, you cannot kiss before you're married or you cannot do this before you're married when the Bible doesn't say that. So I would be really careful about that. Um, I'm really happy for the sister that she is, you know, pursuing suing God in her relationship here. She set up boundaries. She set up stand, like certain standards that she wants to keep to. I think that's awesome. But the important thing is, I think, and you know, I'm just speaking out of what I think is important for me as I'm, as I go into future relationships is establishing those boundaries, relational boundaries. So these kind of physical boundaries, emotional boundaries, people without boundaries are bound to get hurt and it's just wise to have those boundaries but those will change depending on who you are at least what i've seen if i died now i would go to heaven three two one go yeah i'm not saying that i'm a good person but i'm saved by faith in jesus christ who forgives me of my sin i know where i place my faith and that's why i know where i'm gonna go I don't know, it's hard to know exactly what specifically is considered the biggest sins that will keep someone from going to heaven, especially for me when I haven't put as much thought into it as I should. Christianity is not about just making sure you're checking off all the boxes to go to heaven. I feel like that robs us of the heaven that's present here on earth. All I'm responsible for is doing my best every day and I pray that I do that every day, and I think that's true for everybody. Everybody is just responsible for their best. Oh, this is this is tough to kind of process and hear from these folks because you know I, I desperately want them to find hope and and ultimate peace and forgiveness in Jesus. Uh, you know, the question is, hey, can you find, you know, can you be certain, you know, you're going to heaven? If you die today, would you go to heaven? And I, and I guess the sense I get from them is a very works-based worldview. It's this idea, hey, I, I got to do these good things and hopefully at the end, my good will outweigh my bad. Um, ultimately, do we, can we find certainty um, that we're going to go to heaven. Uh, First John here has some answers for us. First John 5 here, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. And then we're going to go down to verse 11. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. You know, ultimately, when we believe in Jesus, certainty is available because ultimately our are like the fact that we're going to heaven us being saved us being ransomed is not up to us it's not on us to keep our salvation it's not on us to keep working in order to for god to love us or accept us no that is on god so us believing in jesus that is enough right it's not like we do 99 percent and god does you know one percent or we do one percent god does the rest or we do five percent and god does 95 percent god does a hundred percent of the work so ultimately we can have certainty not because of how good we are but because of how good god is and how loving he is and how merciful he is so it's not this hey i, I hope my goods will outweigh my bads but 
I thank God because he has saved me, even though I don't deserve it. And that's what I can rest in. Will you have doubts in your salvation? Uh, sometimes, yeah, you will. But ultimately we can come back and there's seasons of those doubts, right? But ultimately we come back into the person of Jesus. And ultimately come back to the gospel, the message of the gospel, forgiveness of sins through the sacrifice of Jesus, not because of what we do, but because of what he does. We can find that certainty. We're not just random, you know, molecules in the universe with no purpose. No, we can have certainty that we are child of a child of God because of who Jesus says we are, not because of what we've done, but because of what he has done for us. Ultimately, some of those folks in the video um, concern me. I, their, you know, their state before God, based on what they've said, it's concerning. So my prayer is that they would come to know Jesus fully, um, that they would understand their sin before God, and come to repentance and faith and just cling to Jesus uh, for their salvation. But I've really enjoyed going through this video and I hope you guys have as well. I hope to do more of this kind of content in the future. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed this series or enjoy my YouTube channel or anything of my ministry at all, I would it would be a huge blessing if you would head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple link in description and support me monthly. Um, this is my passion and it would be a great blessing if you could help support me so I can do this more. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you like this video, give it a like down below. Subscribe to the channel because there's new videos coming out all the time. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. See